Welcome to Acton in Focus. I'm Vivian Kosinger Birchall, your host, and my special guest is a rising senior at the Acton Boxborough Regional High School, uh, Riker, Alicia Riker. Welcome yes. to the show. <laughs> thank you so much, Vivian. I'm really happy to be here. And I'd like to thank you and everyone here for giving me the opportunity to come talk about my organization. Absolutely. I mean, we interacted briefly a few weeks mm -hmm. ago when you were doing a blood drive. That was very noble. That was yeah. uh, uh, you partnered with the with the town of Acton with Melissa at mm -hmm. the recreation. So let's just start there. What was that like? That was really great. Um, so the blood drive in particular, I partnered with Massachusetts General Hospital and the town of Acton. Um, and, you know, at first I wasn't really sure because it was like the first time I was planning something like this. Yeah. Um, so I kind of did a lot of advertising at first. I reached out to like local places of worship, like, you know, churches and temples. I reached out to the library. I reached out to schools and I reached out to Acton and TV News. And, you know, I was really surprised and I was really grateful how everyone kind of came together and rally to help me with the advertising and also the day of we had about 30 to 35 donors which was really amazing to see because it was more than we had anticipated um, and we had even more people come to volunteer come to hand out shirts and um, register people and that was just really amazing to see because um, if you think about it you know each donation saves up to three lives and summer is the time of the month when time of the year when hospitals are at their lowest blood supply so it's really great to see everyone come together for the blood drive right and uh, let's first take it a step back and yeah. just get to know <laughs> who is uh, Alicia Riker like can you tell us a bit about yourself and yeah how, how you do all these amazing things but who are you yeah so I well, as you said, I'm a rising senior at Acton Boxborough Regional High School. Um, and I've, to give you some kind of a backstory um, as to how Project Beacon came around. So um, I grew up in India um, and I was, I'm part of a really big joint family, a really huge uh, family. And I kind of remember how in India community means everything. So um, I can't remember a single day that went by when a neighbor wouldn't come by and knock on the door and check in or um, you know I think we were all there for each other as a support system in good times and in bad times and when I moved here um, it was kind of a difficult process for me because it was well the obvious culture shock you know being in a different place surrounded by different people but also just kind of feeling disconnected from my community and so that is kind of what pushed me to start volunteering and doing community service. Uh, and so I started volunteering at like the life care center, um, senior nursing home, um, at hospitals, um, at local 5K runs, just anything that kind of interested in me. Um, and then at the life care center in particular, I was, I went in, you know, at first just a couple, just a couple of times and then just more and more often I went in and just read to the seniors or I talked to them or I played games with them. And I found that I was really looking forward to my time that I spent with the seniors because I was really enjoying that feeling of giving back to others. Um, and so I started planning events like art night and book club for them. And then I thought, well, why can't the entire community get involved with these kinds of events? You know, why can't we provide opportunities for everyone else to also uh, come to these events and give back? And that's where Project Beacon kind of came from. <laughs> well, first of all, the theme, the uh, recurrent theme that I've yeah. heard in this is you went out to life care, all these, and yeah. all these have a tag to them, which is health care. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, has this were these first interactions as, uh, you know, when you started volunteering, did they shape uh, your interest in health and, or were yes. you interested before in healthcare? And that's mm -hmm. how you ended up volunteering these places. Which came first, the egg or the <laughs> So <laughs> I think definitely growing up, like I was initially interested in healthcare just for that idea of community and giving back because that's how I grew up. That's what I saw around me, and that is exactly what healthcare is all about, you know, community, giving back and helping others. And then I think I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do at first, but when I started volunteering at hospitals, at the life care center, um, I just kind of 
shaped my idea of what I wanted to do and I want to become a physician. So that's kind of what led me down to thinking, okay, I want to make my contribution through becoming a doctor. So yes, I guess in a way my experiences like really did um, shape me and shape who I want to become in the future. Yeah, <laughs> That's very exciting. As somebody who's interested in healthcare, I'm always passionate to talk about yeah. a younger person <laughs> interested in uh, the field of health and medicine. Yeah. But let's, I, I want to take us back to, you said you, you were new here. Uh, were you born in India? Um, I was actually born in, here in California, but I moved to India when I was a very, very young, like six months old. Uh, and so I grew up in India and I spent like almost, you know, like half my life there. Mm. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, we shouldn't say half your life because you're still living. But <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> but I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, that, that is uh, the reason I asked is because uh, oftentimes people will, don't realize that you could maybe be born here and then go live somewhere else and then have yeah. to come back in a yeah. completely new environment. Yeah. And here in Acton, we have people coming from all over the world mm -hmm. and your story resonates will, with many of yeah. our youth, many mm -hmm. of our community members. And so um, the fact that you're giving back uh, after experiencing that kind of uh, first of all, it was kind of loneliness yeah. and, uh, you know, yeah. feeling lost a little bit, mm -hmm. but using that as um, as a mom, as a platform to mm -hmm. really give back to your community. Yeah. So, in your in the time that you have been giving back, what have been some of the milestones or the most uh, prominent experiences that you have had? Yeah. Well, I like to talk about Project Art because I think that kind of encapsulates like what Project Beacon is all about, and also kind of what you were saying, like a milestone, something I was really proud of myself for and something I was really proud of my community for. So um, Project Art is one of the more recent projects that we did. Um, and I went to each elementary school in Acton uh, and I connected with their art teachers and I kind of introduced to the students this idea of making art for seniors. And it was really up to them what they wanted to make. but. I kind of went in, took a couple of art classes. Um, I talked to the students and I was, you know, I was like, maybe you can make a painting, maybe you can make something else. But I really didn't even need to be there because they were so excited and so engaged and they just, they were out of this world. You know, we ended up donating about 100 to 150 pieces of art to the Life Care Center in particular. Um, and this included everything from bookmarks to, you know, bouquets made from like origami flowers, mm. which were so beautiful. I could not have made something like that. Um, and even like jokes, you know, like knock knock jokes or like whatever jokes that the students had come up with. And like, it may just be art, but they were really making an impact on their community. And so I really like, I, this project in particular, I really enjoyed because I enjoyed seeing how the youth were coming together to do community service in the same way I had when I was younger. And I kind of saw how this experience instilled in them like a passion for community service that I hope stays with them as they grow up, you know? Um, and in turn, the, the seniors, they really enjoyed it as well. The jokes, they loved the jokes especially. Um, and you know, the next time I went to volunteer, they were using the bookmarks, they were admiring the flowers. It was really great. So I think that's the idea of community, giving to others, but also in turn like, getting that satisfaction and being able to help someone. So that's something I'm definitely very proud of. This sounds so exciting even before I take part in any of the activities because yeah. you sound <laughs> joyful as you even talk about it. So mm -hmm. which is which shows the impact it has had not just on our community but on you, on you or somebody yeah. who is organizing these. So it, which takes me to the next question. How do you mobilize uh, your volunteers or the youth to come and yeah. support these projects? Yeah, so we are a relatively new organization. So we're always looking for more volunteers because the whole idea is, you know, community. So get involved. Um, but so far, most of our volunteers or people have just come from like the high school, um, people I know, and the way I've been trying to get the community involved in these like initial stages where we don't have many volunteers is just planning the events around this idea of anyone who wants to help can get involved, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So some of the events we've done, so like Project Art, where elementary students could get involved, or another project we did where community members made jewelry for pediatric cancer patients. 
these are all things that anyone can help out with and come to no matter how old you are, no matter um, your background, you can come in and you can help out and give back to your community. So that is kind of the way I've been getting people, uh, well, first of all, like letting people like know about Project Beacon, like raising awareness, but also getting more and more people involved. Right, and then uh, one of the last questions that I ask is, uh, you mentioned, of course, pediatric cancer, uh, but how do you decide uh, what themes to, yeah. to be, you know, the, the signatures yeah. of your organizations? Um, so I think so far, since it's been kind of just a small group of volunteers, we kind of just do whatever we are inspired by. So for the pediatric cancer patients in particular, um, I was volunteering at local hospitals in pediatric cancer wards. Oh. Yeah. And just, I, I wanted to give back, but you know, I'm not a healthcare worker yet. So I was trying to find ways for me to give back as a high school student. And I thought, why not? Why don't we, this is like a community event, you know, why don't we do something that'll make them happy and also get the community involved. Um, and so that is where that idea came from. And, you know, in the future, we're thinking of doing like, care baskets for pediatric cancer patients uh, and survivors at a local camp I've heard of, Camp Casco. Um, and so that's kind of where these ideas are coming from. Um, but as we get more volunteers, I hope to also get their input and what they want to work on. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and uh, now you're about to get back to school. Yes. Are there going to be projects as you're in school? And what kind of projects will those be? And how can people get to know about them? Definitely. So um, I anticipate us doing a lot of projects in the next couple of months. So if you want to get involved, definitely go to the website or reach out to our Gmail address. So that's proj.beacon at gmail.com. And definitely reach out with any questions or comments because really anyone can get involved at any stage uh, no matter how old you are no matter how much time you have to donate to project beacon um, there's a way for you to volunteer and so the next couple of projects we have coming up is a food pantry like a food drive in partnership with the acton food pantry uh, and then also the care baskets for pediatric cancer patients um, and if maybe planning an event is not your thing, we are thinking of expanding and having, you know, newsletters and podcasts and research. And so that is kind of how we want to grow in the next few months. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And uh, do you have a timeline for, for when, for example, the, uh, the baskets would be made? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, definitely uh, in the next couple of months. Right now we're trying to uh, you know, set up fundraisers to get that money to make those baskets. Um, but yes, <laughs> in the next few months. And I really recommend, you know, signing up for the email and newsletter because we will be sending out updates very soon with how you can get involved and what events we will be planning. Yeah, fantastic. Is there anything we haven't uh, talked about about Project Beacon uh, that you'd like our viewers to know? Um, really, like if there's anyone out there who's interested in you know, community and wanting to do something like this. From my own experiences, I can say that Acton is a really great place to do so because I, you know, had a lot of opportunities to get volunteering hours and community service when I moved here through the library, through hospitals, um, but also at school, you know, the school is really great. I'm part of like two clubs that are community service based that I first joined, you know, when I entered high school and now I'm leading them. and that kind of also really shaped my experiences because of that amount of support. Um, you know, we held a couple of fundraisers to raise money for Doctors Without Borders through community festival events like Holy. Um, and that's kind of how Project Beacon really like, that's kind of the beginnings of it, you know, all these like fundraisers, community events. Um, I think there's a, a lot of great support here in Acton. And all if you're interested, all you need to do is get started, reach out, whatever you're passionate about, I promise there's a way to connect it to community, so. Awesome, that is a way, a great, fantastic way of uh, wrapping this up. Yeah. I'd like to thank you for, uh, first of all, being here on the show. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're, of course, yeah. you're most welcome. Uh, we're, I'm proud of you, of all the work that you do as uh, you as young people challenge us every day to do better, to do more. And, uh, you know, I'd like to thank you for mm -hmm. caring for the community. 
and to our viewers. I hope you have uh, learned about uh, Alicia's projects. You can learn more at the email address that she has provided, and you can also visit her website, which is listed below. So, but for now, <laughs> thank you for watching Acton in Focus. Till next time. Thank you.